Yeah, no, I started with the, the Machado Brothers. It was 1990. I was introduced by Chris Howder, who's now a fifth-degree black belt under Higgin. And Chris and I were uh, both students of Guru Asano at the Inasano Academy, and I think it was around 1988 that um, Eric Paulson was doing an afternoon seminar uh, and grappling wrestling at the Inasano Academy, and Chris and I partnered up and or, uh, and maybe 89, and we had already started allowing grappling in our Dog Brother thing, the Dog Brothers starting in 1988. Right. With 11 and, members, right? Uh, yeah. Well, 12 if 12. you count a, a pot of the dog, right. the Akita, <laughs> which we do. Right. Um, and so, you know, we had allowed grappling because our experience was it happens, and but we didn't know what we were doing. We, we just did it anyway. And um, so I was, you know, I was very intrigued, and I had a lot of respect for Chris. He had had a couple of uh, Muay Thai uh, fights against uh, some Cambodians down in uh, Long Beach. You know, so I knew him to be a, a genuine, real guy. And uh, see, so he told me about these uh, these brothers that he had started training with. He said the last name's not Gracie, but that's uh, they're part of the Gracie family. For them, the blood comes through the mother's side. And I had heard of the Gracies back in 86 when I was training with Paul Vunak. And uh, Paul had started with them, but uh, wasn't ready to share the connection at that time. And Paul wasn't. Ready Paul to share. wasn't. Okay. And, um, but he, and he spoke very highly of them, and I had seen the footage through Hal Faulkner of what was later to become Gracie Jiu Jitsu in action. And so I knew of it. And so when you know, he, Chris told me that these guys were in a part of the family just as legit even though the name was different uh, I was ready to go and so in uh, summer of 1990 is when I started with the Machado brothers did you start with the gi or would you go straight to no gi or I uh, started with the gi although in my particular case um, the usual progression is you start with escape from mount but in our case, the fighting was so oriented towards uh, the fang choke. Eric had recently right. stumbled across the fang choke and was fanging everything in sight. And um, he had had one misadventure where he tried fanging this 230-pound All-State Georgia wrestler while standing up. And the guy had one of these weak half helmets with the, the big bib. And so the choke didn't bite quickly, and the guy suplexed him. And for the next 30 minutes, he was wandering around in a daze saying why are we in minnesota we happen to be in tennessee at the time and uh so we, we you know sort of standard doctrine became don't fang standing up <laughs> right so it, but, it was is in the case of katami position then yes Scarpo? so you know so with the machados you know uh my training with uh it, it, i started with carlos and um you know so the the initial focus was on both sides of case of katami and uh, in the context of the fang choke and so in the first series uh we invited carlos to teach that portion of the material that was in tape five and carlos is dominantly or residing in texas mostly yeah he moved to texas uh because of the chuck norris connection uh the brothers had greatly impressed chuck and he had been uh instrumental in helping them to get their visas to come to the united states and um so when Chuck went to Texas for the, I think it was for the Texas Walker Ranger show, uh, he persuaded Carlos to come out there with him. And I, I think it's natural for five brothers to eventually each find spread out a bit, you know, spread their wings a bit separately from Absolutely. each other and declare their own space. And uh, but a very strong connection between the five of them. I, if I'm not mistaken, in a, a month or two, all five brothers are going to be teaching under one roof Correct. together seminar. And it'll be in Texas. If we're here in L.A., I'd be sure to go. But I met um, their mother when I went down to uh, Rio de Janeiro with Higgin in 1992. I was part of the first group that Higgin brought down. And so I met his mother. I, actually, I met Carlos Gracie himself. Um, I speak Spanish, so I was sort of able to understand some of his Portuguese. And I think the second thing he said to me was, I have 21 children. <laughs> Which yeah. was very natural for that generation. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you know, not all the same mother. but uh, <laughs> <laughs> Men don't change. Yes, exactly. Uh, one of the themes of the Dog Brothers. And um, mother is a wonderful woman, and you could really see... 
and how the brothers are with each other, you know, the mother's influence and, you know, what a fine woman she was. The father had di- died uh, health issues uh, when they were younger, but, you know, it really raised them uh, to be brotherly with each other. And they, they, they have a wonderful relationship with each other and each one of them a real classy guy in his own way. I, I was really curious about how they would be accepted into the Gracie clan too, you know, because that's a very <laughs> Carlos and Helio side politicized. Well, they trained with both. Correct. Uh, um, Higgin took me uh, when we were in Brazil. Um, I was there for, I think, about three weeks. And he trained the hell out of us before bringing us down there because he did not want to embarrass us, embarrassing him by being out Correct. of shape and, and, and so mentor. forth. Yeah. And um, so I was very par- proud to be a part of the group. And he took us to Terrazopolis where they had trained in the, the mountains outside of Rio. And, you know, and he spoke of Uncle Helio and Uncle Carlos. And um, yeah, no, you know, I'm not going to go into the the family politics sure. that led them, you know, branching off into their own. Uh, one of the many lessons I've learned from Gorna Sano is don't get involved in other people's politics. Stay on your lane. <laughs> Absolutely. But uh, I have tremendous regard for all of the Machados. I, I continue to see Higgin on a semi-regular basis. I'm in, uh, he's, he's got a school up on Wilshire Boulevard with uh, Martin Wheeler of Sistema. And... Um, uh, I, I've managed to slipstream into Goronasano's class with uh, Martin Wheeler. And the Sistema is interesting. I know there's the all the questions that naturally arise from what might be called the feigning goat syndrome of some of the videos on the Internet. But um, What is it Martin, that you like? Uh, Martin has a, a lot to offer. The, uh, the, the, the fluidity, the movement, a tremendous and... Uh, at the moment, incomprehensible to me, ability to hit hard and with a body mechanics that I just don't understand. Huh. Uh, um, very non-telegraphic, very deceptive, um, weird angles. Uh, and still with power. Oh, tremendous power. And, um, and there's a lot of body wisdom. And you know, as you get older, and you know, I've had adventures al- along the way in my years, um, and you, you get dinged up a bit, you, you start appreciating the body wisdom more. And so, you know, for me, that's where I find the merit. Martin's very kind and patient with me. I'm not the most talented, but, you know, I, Some I feel, would say I, I feel it helping me. Well, you not being talented. I understand the humility, but uh, well, you're yeah. pretty well established in the screamer and the martial world. So, but I I'm not trying to blow smoke either. Well, I, I appreciate that, but I don't really, you know, there are people who have tremendous genetic gifts and you know i think it would be false modesty to say that i'm average in my gifts i I, you know i I do think i'm above average but nothing of particular note um you know really after you know once you have enough talent then it really becomes more a question of um, will and character You, you have to have the will to do the work the will to persist when you get knocked down and get back up and and to stay with it. Do you feel with all your teaching lineage, you can spot if the student is actually going to be a fighter or not, or if they're recreationally um, adept? Well, that, yeah, that's an interesting question. And you know, I, um, I would say that people will surprise you. Okay. You know, for example, I was just in uh, Japan a few weeks ago for the first time. Uh, Sled Dog opened the door for me there, Philip Gelinas of uh, Montreal, Canada. And he had been working with the Pekiti Tertia group there, and so they brought the both of us out there a couple of weeks ago. And uh, they were already doing, you know, pretty hard, you know, they're already enthusiastically entered into the real contact stick fighting. And I remember there was this one guy who, during the seminar, was kind of bumbling, kind of self, and most Japanese being very self-effacing and very respectful. And um, but then all of a sudden, when it came to fight time, I, you know, once again, I was surprised. And, and as I have done all the seminars that I've done again and again, the lesson is put in front of me that it's very common for someone to look very uncoordinated with somebody else's material and if they have 
the good manners not to go well this is how i do it you know that they in other words they're there to learn it can be very easy to uh, underestimate people and so i've just learned to uh not assume 